Thank you for coming. My name is Shanta. I am one of the co-organizers of WordCamp Toronto. Thank you so much for coming this morning and spending your Sunday morning with me. Um, some of you uh, I've never met before. Some of you are brand new to me. Um, some of you I've practically strong-armed into being here, So, uh, especially my students. Yes, I see some of you. Um, the rest of them, no. They, they don't get extra bonus points. So today we are talking about facets. So this is a brand new talk uh, that I presented at FITC a couple of weeks ago. So um, I would really appreciate any feedback that you have. So let's get started. We're going to try and do not so much a live demo, but much go into the WordPress installation. And I will show you exactly what we're talking about. Um, at one point in the presentation, um, the whole presentation as it sits right now actually has every screenshot that you'll probably need. So when I first presented this, I just literally went through those screenshots. Here, I'll actually try and jump into that WordPress installation. Consider the slides a backup. How's that? So let's get started. So we're going to do a quick about me, uh, a little bit about how to organize your facets and what they are. Um, the tools that I used in creating this presentation, as well as some others, I learned about along the way. This is the beauty about a WordCamp, is that you pick a topic, you go ahead and learn about it, and then you share that knowledge with your community. Um, importing data and setting it up for success, setting up and implementing the facets. If you would like to follow along, um, I have this website here called wilt.rocks. Wilt is what I learned today. So big thanks uh, for those of you who got to uh, meet Suzette Frank yesterday. This was, uh, this was an idea I stole off of her. So she has Wilt and, and then another website. So I, I chose Wilt.rocks. So what I learned today, rocks. And then forward slash events. So you'll get to see the front end of it. You'll get to play with it. You just won't get to see the back end of it. So this is me. Um, a lot of words. Uh, many of you have already heard much of this already if you've ever attended one of my talks. How many of you, by the way, uh, came to my WordPress thing on Thursday? Whoa, none of them are here. OK, that's fine. Um, so I'm an instructor. This is what I do almost every day. I am an instructor at Sheridan College, which is in Oakville. And it is a joint program with the University of Toronto at Mississauga. So we get to teach the university guys all the fun stuff, like web design like our capstone course, which pairs our students with real live clients, such as our friend in the front here. So um, I'm also an independent consultant. A couple of weeks ago, uh, my business partner, uh, Justin Howe, and I opened Web Weapons. So we are now in the business of actually making those websites and um, hopefully getting some of our students hired in the process as well. Some of my clients have always included uh, nonprofit organizations. I love working with nonprofits, smaller businesses, real estate, software development, wonderful things. I also have a Bachelor of Commerce degree from inf in Information Technology from Ryerson University. Um, and I'm a serial word camper. I've gone to seven word camps in 2014. This is my fourth word camp Toronto and my fourth time speaking at word camp Toronto. Um, I went to seven uh, in 2014, including New York and Chicago and Los Angeles. And then this year I've also done, this is my sixth this year, I'm crowdsourcing the entire thing. And I'll be going to Ann Arbor in a couple of weeks. My big hope is to go to WordCamp Mumbai in March. So we'll see how that goes. So I have to say at least it's been a relatively decent success this year. I've learned a lot of lessons. Next year, WordCamp Tour is going to launch in Mumbai if I have anything to do with it. I am also the co-organizer for WordCamp Hamilton this year and WordCamp Toronto. So go big or go home, I guess. So first of all, a big thanks. Um, so I would not have done this talk without a couple of people. So first goes out to Becky Davis. Now, Becky Davis actually gave a talk in Miami as well as in Milwaukee. And she's the one who actually gave me the idea to do this. My typical talk is on content architecture. This was a new way of looking at information architecture, and she just blew my mind with this presentation. So big thanks goes out to Becky for giving me the idea. This is a completely different way of looking at it, but she's the one who inspired me to do it. Sean Pucknell is one of the founders of FITC. Sean actually, um, when I gave, proposed a bunch of my talks, he goes, you know what, our guys are going to be a little bit more advanced. Is there something you can do? So he was actually the one to help me develop the idea around this talk. Lastly, of course, Justin Howe, and he did not know I was putting this slide in here. Um, Justin actually was the one to help me set this thing up. Whenever I ran into a bug, I'm like, 
okay, what do I do now? Justin was there to actually help me get through this. So a big thank you to all those. Lastly, for those of you that were at the after party last night, you can tell I was. Um, the, uh, the other thing I know that Chrissy's going to talk about a little bit later on is about community. And I just wanted to give a big thanks to everyone who was there last night. For those of you who didn't know, I had a friend of mine that I just found out passed away yesterday. And somebody said to me, well, why did you make a toast at the WordCamp after party? And it was very simple. They said, you know, this has nothing to do with WordPress. I said, absolutely, it does have something to do with WordCamp because I'm around friends. So I consider the WordCamp community and the WordPress community my friends. So a big thanks to all of you who joined in that last night and helped, uh, helped toast uh, to a very good friend. So first of all, um, excuse all the text, OK? I am not a ninja. I'm actually a samurai. Um, it's true. Um, please excuse all the text and the screenshots. I'm used to giving to students. Students like a lot of text. They like a lot of stuff that they can go back to in their slides. Um, so understand you'll have a lot of screenshots, and they make great notes. So don't have to worry about writing every single little detail down. So at very least, I can tell you that's not going to be bad. Um, and again, please ask questions. Yes, whenever something comes up, I may say we're going to cover it. But by all means, if you have something I need to clarify, please do bring that up. So let's get into this. Information architecture and knowledge. There are two ways of looking at information architecture. When someone comes to your site, they are probably of two minds. One, do I understand the topic that is being covered on this website? Do I know something about this topic? If the answer is yes, then they will more than likely go to the navigation and sort of figure out where it is in that navigation they need to go. But what if they don't know what's out there? What if they don't know about the topic? Facets are typically used in very large informational sites. Now, for those of you who have attended my talk before, you've heard me talk about three, five, seven. Three clicks to where you need to be, no more than five to seven items in a list. When facets are concerned, that is actually probably your third click. You're getting to a point where, OK, these are my results. And then you're filtering it down, which we will see. So that would probably be your third click. Um, so this is what we're going to run through when we talk about facets. So here are some examples. Amazon. Amazon is a great example. When we go to Amazon, you can search by title, by author, genre, price, department, and so much more. So if we have a look at Amazon.ca. Whoa, I hate it when that happens. Thank you. It's actually a built-in theme, believe it or not, on Windows. OK, so we are in Amazon. So what do we want to search? Let's search dragons. OK, so here we are. We are looking at dragons. There are so many things about dragons, especially on something like Amazon. You can look for videos. You can look for um, an LED orb statue. Like you, there's so many, so many pieces to this. But if you look down the side here, and I know it's hard to read, but oh, I'm not sorry about a TARDIS going off in my talk. Are you kidding? That's awesome. You'll see one later. Um, uh, so you have movies and TV. You've got books. You've got shipping options, video format, children's range, book format, and the list goes on. Everything down to price, down to just about anything you can possibly imagine. So if we are looking at dragons, we might go down this list. We might look by author. We might look by average customer review. So let's say, OK, you know what? This is way too many options, because we've got over a million results. So let's look for dragon costumes. OK, now we're getting somewhere. Now we have a little bit better idea of what we're looking for. So you could either um, maybe go by children's costume, by cost. Now we're sort of filtering down our options. These on the side, each one of these is a facet. OK? Each category, if you will, is a facet. OK? And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the rest of the presentation. OK. 
So another example, Expedia, right? You go and you're looking for a flight. You're looking for a hotel. You're looking by price. You're looking by time of day that you want to depart, time of day that you want to arrive. Each one of those is a facet, number of connections, those types of things, okay? Another great example. Questions so far? Yes. Okay, so would the definition of a facet be um, categories by which a user can go down their search? I want to be careful about using the term categories only because WordPress uses the term categories. But yes, in a general sense, um, outside of the sort of WordPress, um, WordPress categories, yes, I would say Criteria. so. Criteria, there we go, yes. I would say that, fa well, when they talk about facets, facets um, actually originates from the term on gemstones. And each way that you look at it is a facet. This is probably what I would call metadata. I, I might even be a little bit off on that, but it, basically if I turn this same result in a different way, I'm looking at it slightly differently. Am I looking at it by price? Am I looking at it by location? Am I looking at it by that? Um, but yes, it is in essence a, a way of filtering down those. So would I call each one a filter? No, I would call the results the, the filter. I guess my question is more to do with the user experience. Yes. So uh, to me, facets are the, are, are sort of pure play metadata, where it's like filters are off and kind of all the hardcore where you can actually reduce the results down to as many as three levels down where you're... Yeah, facets uses um, what they call a flat hierarchy. The hierarchy that I'm used to dealing with is um, a little bit more leveled, which is where that three comes in, right? You have this, then you have a subcategory and a subcategory that leads you down to that result. Here, you could have multiple results and still have, um, that have similar traits about them. So I, I'm, still, I'm still learning that piece of it. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bulk up on that. Yes? I just as a suggestion to distinguish categories from facets, I think the use of facets is in the sense of characteristics of things and that you look at the objects in question and find their characteristics or facets. Categories is more of a, a scheme you develop to which you apply to a group of things or objects by putting them in the categories. So a given object may or may not belong in a given category, but wine, for example, whether it's a red or white, will share essentially all the same facets or characteristics. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, one is a a priori scheme and another one is sort of derived from the actual data. Great. Yeah, I, I can't top that. It's you perfect. Can use the word taxonomy. Mm -hmm. No, but Yeah, no, I'm I'm trying to stay away from the taxonomy. taxonomy. Yeah. I think of the question of filters, because I run into this constantly in terms of categories and facets. I think filters is better thought of as an action or a transaction purpose of things to a small, to a subset. And so the filtering process ends up giving you something less than the whole, which you then do something with, record, further search, or whatever. But in that sense, it, people are confused by using the term other than in that context, because you could say that a facet or a characteristic or a category is a filter, but you're really saying that you're doing something to the thing in question to produce something. Filter is more of a so verb. Exactly, exactly. Different way of looking at your information architecture, yeah. So that brings us to why we're here. Facet WP. Facet WP is a premium plugin for WordPress. It's $79 for three sites at the time of the writing, $199 for unlimited sites. Both are per year and include service and updates. And you can find that at facetwp.com. Um, so I went on to this and I've learned a lot by building this, uh, this presentation. So what I'm going to lead you through are some of the, the hurdles that I went through and show you because especially when it is a premium plugin, you can download a 30 day trial, but unless you actually get into it and you actually have a chance to play around with it in that 30 days, you lose that chance. So some people are a little bit weary about going into that 30 day, um, 
that 30 day trial. So I've spent the money for you. So we can play around with it as much as we want for the next year. So a lot of words. For the demo today, importing, I used uh, WP All Import. Now this is the free edition. Um, their premium plugin um, allows you to do many, many more things. But what I used is the WP All Import um, for XML data. Okay, so I actually used the City of Toronto Festival Open Data. So the Open Data crew here in Toronto is going to love me for this. Um, and it is in XML format. So I used this uh, free version, the WP All Import for XML. The paid edition allows for importing and placement of advanced custom fields as well as images. So the free version doesn't allow for that, the paid version does. So that being said, I want to qualify this by saying that the data that I brought in, I have not exactly placed in an ideal situation. What I mean by that is, I could have installed advanced custom fields, I could have in installed uh, custom post types and all that other goodness. The problem is, is that with the free version and the premium is probably well over 100 bucks. I'd already spent the money on Facet WP. So um, what I'm, what I'm going to suggest here is that if you are looking at importing large amounts of data, go with the premium edition, especially if you're dealing with advanced custom fields of any sort and images for that matter. Okay. So what I'm using today, while it may not be the ideal setup in an information architecture perspective, I basically worked with what I've got to get us to a point where I could show you something. Okay? So again, not exactly the most ideal, but certainly decent enough that I can show you a presentation today. I also looked at uh, CSVs. Now I ex explored and tested WP Ultimate CSV Importer for CSV files. Out of the box, it will import into all the standard stuff as well as advanced custom fields. The data I was working with was XML, so that's why I chose the first one. But I did look at this one, and it will do that right out of the box for free. So if you're dealing with CSV, so much the better. So some other goodness. Um, to keep testing the imports, I kept deleting and recreating the posts. So when I was importing, we're looking at 773 records. Um, every time that created a post. So I ended up with 773 posts. And if it didn't import right or I needed to change something or whatever, that's a lot of posts to go through and, and delete, even page by page by page. So I learned about this plugin called Bulk Delete. So if you're ever doing a testing where you're importing, you're exporting, you want to see what the result is, this worked really, really well. Um, and it was out of the box, it's free, it's called Bulk Delete. Uh, through the WordPress repository. Uh, to do restores, I use Backup Buddy because it is so easy to use. I know that Justin will also say that he likes Updraft uh, Plus as well. So we've been testing both of those uh, in comparison to see how well they do. Um, they also, um, iThemes is the producer of this plugin. They have amazing, amazing stuff for educators. So if you are a, a teacher and or a student, they also have some really great stuff available for students as well as educators. Um, and of course, I use the City of Toronto Festival open data. So, a lot of goodness, even in addition, even before we even get to Facet WP. So, this is what I learned today. See, this is why I did this. So, I'm going to jump over to my site on the dashboard. The rest of the presentation is mostly screenshots to guide you through, um, but I'm not going to go through them slide by slide by slide unless my demo dies. Um, which is where my backup comes in, but I'll jump to the to the end as well. Is Al in the room? Okay, no Al Davis, I'm going live. Don't tell him. Okay, so as we go through this, we are going to, first of all, find my mouse. That's where it is. Okay, so, okay, you ready for this? TARDIS. Huh? Huh? See? Told you I was not upset about there being a TARDIS. <laughs> it's not pretty, okay? I'm not a designer. I'm not a developer. All I'm showing you guys here, and I expect you guys to be able to go in and make this pretty and set it up the way it should be done. So I can at least guide you in that direction while this may or may not have been the most ideal situation. So 
as you can tell, fascinating, right? We've got a page here called About Me. We've got a, a page called Events. So I created this on a page. So um, we are going to take a look at the dashboard first, and we're going to come back to this. So this is just the straight out of the box theme. The only things that are installed on this installation are the pieces that I needed to do this demo. There's nothing else. So if we look at this, first of all, there's my all import. Um, you can go to new import. I'm going to manage my imports. The beauty about this is that I could continually reuse the, uh, the data. And so this is the, uh, the import that I did on the XML. You can run an import and tell it, OK, I want you to do this. Now, I've already done the import. So trying to overwrite it would be a really big mess right now. So, but what you do is you essentially say, OK, here's what the data looks like. You know, double check it against what those records are. And there are shots of that in, in the presentation itself. Um, and then what you do is you basically drag and drop the pieces that you want from that data into what you would normally have as your post. So what did I do? I took the title of the event and I made it the title of the post. Sounds reasonable, right? Now, you would normally have things like start date, start time, end date, end time. Each of those should more than likely be the um, advanced custom posts, right? Or advanced custom fields. Those are not necessarily going to be in your categories or whatever. For this presentation, what I did was I took the category or the type of event according to the XML data and I use that for my categories. Think about it. When somebody comes to your site and they don't know what events are available, what is probably one of the first things that they're going to look at? Maybe not the first, but one up. What type of events? That is a category. That is a major classification and probably one of the biggest ones you're going to find. So that made logical sense with this set of data. So I used the categories from WordPress and I took the type of event from the XML data and I mapped it to that. So when it did the import, the type of event became a category. Um, and then what I did also was um, I tried to use the start date or the date of the event as the publish date just to play around with. Again, that would probably be an advanced custom field. So what ends up happening? So I publish all of these posts. And guess what happens? Well, some of them are not even published, right? Because some of them are in 2016 and so on. So there is actually a chance on here to randomize your publish date. So you're importing all of this stuff. You're not going to go and set every single date, potentially. You may want to do it you know, minus 7 or something like that. And you can actually tell it that. So what I ended up doing was saying, fine, just assign a random date to all of these wonderful posts. Now, obviously, that's not how you're going to do it. I did it for a demo purpose. More than likely, if you've got a list of events, you want those posted maybe a month before or whatever have you. So the lesson to be learned here is this. You better make sure that whatever you are importing makes sense and plan your import long before you even get to facets, right? Keep the facets in mind, but before you even get there, you have to think about what it is that your users are going to need. There were probably over 100 fields in each one of those records. So I only took a sample of that. What I did was I took the title, as I mentioned, put it into the title. I took originally the date of the event and made it the publish date. In the body, I put the description. So the description that was provided by the event into the body. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, why don't I show you one of those posts? That will probably be a heck of a lot easier. OK, so this is an example here. And it got posted on September the 15th. This is me. What you're looking at here is a category. So I pulled that from the type of event in XML data. Central West, this is a tag. I did not use this the ideal way. Normally, if you're going to give it a region, that should be put into an advanced custom field. But because I didn't have the premium edition, I went with the tag. 
Typically, WordPress asks for about five to seven tags. So I am using it not in an average way, but I'm going to use it for our purposes today. So what you've got there is the category, which is the type of event, and I use the tags to tell me what area in the city it resides. The data also contain things like wheelchair access. Is it kid-friendly? Is there alcohol being served? Is all those wonderful, wonderful things. So trust me when I say this could be a heck of a lot bigger than it is. So what I chose to do is I chose to put the website of the event into the body as well as what the major intersection was and if there was a description. Okay, and I'm going to show you that back end very, very shortly. So if we go back here, I went into the all import. Once I brought in my data, then you go over into facets. If you go under settings, it's hiding. Okay? So it is under settings and then facet WP. The main event, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Welcome, facets, templates, settings, and support. So what you are looking at here is the welcome screen. It's going to guide you through this. Once again, I am not a developer and a designer. What I chose to do was pretty much the defaults of what Facets is going to put out to me. All I did was basically choose some stuff. If you guys want to make it look prettier, if you guys want to import code and all that other stuff, I'm going to show you where to do it. But I have left it mostly at the defaults. Okay. So first of all, let's look at the templates. So the template itself is default. This template is what your data is going to put out to. In my case, I told it to put out to posts. I know this is really hard to read on this screen, but essentially it's returning an array, right? You've got the display code here, the query arguments are there. So that's essentially what this is doing, is a query. Based on whatever filter you've chosen, the code is going to go in to a brand new database. Okay, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And it is going to query whatever that choice is and look through all of those posts and say, what equals this? And then display it. In this case, it is showing a default of 15 posts. That may be too much. That may be too little. Your choice. The default is 15. And I've left it at that. I have not touched anything on this page. This is exactly the way it is shown. Again, this is one of the, the screenshots that you'll find in the slides. So I've left the template as a default. That is actually what is going to display in the results of your search. OK? So I'm going to go back. Now, you'll notice that there is a short code there. And what it says is facet WP template equals open quote default, close quote. That is the short code that you are going to implement on your post or page, whatever your thing is, to display the results. That's what this is for. Make sense? Are there any questions up to this stage? OK. Now we're going to look at the actual facets themselves. So if I go over to facets, I have created these already. And the beauty is, is you can create almost anything that you want. Again, use your advanced custom fields. Use your images. We're working with a very large data set, but limited options and what we can import them to for this demonstration. So we have different types. And you can actually see on the top, I have an event type, which is based on categories in this particular case. That is going to be a drop down menu. Okay. The second one is by location. Those are check boxes. And for this demo, I imported those into the tags of, Word, of WordPress. The date is actually a date range. So I can actually say from here to here, which is a lot of what they do on a lot of the airline sites, like when do you want to fly? I want to go from here to here. It can be hours. I don't want to fly before noon or anything of that nature, right? So each one of these can be almost any type of selector that you want. Does that make sense? Everything from drop-down boxes to check boxes, date ranges, 
There are so many options, okay? So let's just see what it looks like. So this is a brand new facet. This is the label here is new facet. We have a checkbox. These are your options. Checkboxes, drop down, hierarchy, search, autocomplete, slider, date range, number range, and proximity. Huge amounts of stuff that you can use with this. Everything from geographic to time to space and time. We can control space and time. So if we look at the data source, you can see where you can pull these from. Everything from your categories to your tags to custom post types, anything you want. This is where the data is coming from. So you've done your import. Those are what you're going to pull from. This is looking at your posts or the fields that are associated with those posts and say, OK, this is what I want you to pull on to create those options that someone selects. Um, there are some other settings here as well. Um, I left all of these, when I created this demo, I left all of these to, uh, to the defaults. I haven't changed any of that either. So the only thing I do is create the label, create the, uh, the type of facet that we're looking at. Is it going to be checkboxes, whatever, and what the data source is. This one? You're welcome. So once I have done all of this, you're going to save the changes. Okay, this is like your navigation menus. And I always say to my students, save the menu. Save the facets. Once you have completed this, you must re-index, which is in the top corner there. What facets does is it creates its own database and to create those filters, to create those relationships. So every time you create a facet, it needs to add that to the database, and it needs to go through and do its own re-indexing. And I'm sure that the developers and everyone else in the room who deals with this stuff can explain it much better than I. That is the very simple, simple explanation. So what I have created, and I'm not necessarily going to use that one. So I've already created these three, as I mentioned. So if I look at event type, I've created a drop down. I'm basing it on categories, and I've left everything to the default. Make sense? What it creates, once again, is a short code. So facet equals event type. That is what you're going to put into the location where you want those checkboxes or those filters to show for your user to select. In my case, I put both the results as well as the filters or the facets on the same page. You could decide to do it on a sidebar. You could decide to put all of the options on one page and then go to the next page to show the results. Entirely up to you. I've just kept it very, very simple. So now we've set up our data. We've set up the template in which we're going to show those results. I have put them on a page. And I'm going to show you that page right now. This is your code. So what I've written in is event type. I put in facet WP facet event type. That will show my, uh, my drop down menu. My location are checkboxes. The event date is a slider. and I. I wasn't too fond of how it worked right out of the box, so I may have to play around with that one. Um, but I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with the rest of it. The results are right here, which is facet WP template. So this is the template that we created in the beginning. This is where your results are going to show. So whether you're going to show 10 results, again, by default, it's 15. Make sense? Questions about any of that? Yes. Sure. Did you, so a lot of questions that are beneath everybody here. Um, what did you just copy and pasted those what you call short codes? That's it. And added a tagline or what was that? Yeah, some of this is just like location I just typed in. Right. So that 
So that will exactly that will appear once we get to that. Yeah, no, I did not create these. Facet WP created it for me. This is the beauty about this thing. It does really guide you through the process. Again, I tested this about five times, and most of the testing that I ended up having to do was actually on the import of the data. The facet WP part of this was the easiest part, believe it or not. The hardest part of this, other than the import, is actually understanding what makes sense to your users. And at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. What makes sense to you as the business owner to guide them through that path to get to what they want, right? How do they get to buy your stuff, right? That's what this is all about. So in ultimate reality, this Facet WP was actually the easiest, easiest part of this. You had a question? Yeah, I think I missed something here. How do you, what do you mean by imports? Like, what are you importing? Are you not just, like, posting posts or something? So in my case, because I didn't want to go through and create all of those posts, I actually used the open data from uh, City of Toronto. And it was all of their festival data, so that's what the all import was for. I had that create 773 posts. Oh. Then you jump over to Facet WP, and then you go, okay, now I've got all of this stuff. How do I guide my users to a particular event? So I chose categories. That's the type of event. I chose uh, the event date. Maybe we're looking at what happens in October. Oh, look, WordCamp Toronto. Um, the location. This may be in your neighborhood. So this is actually divided by Central East, Central West, all those kinds of fun things. Question at the back. So, so the question is, is about uh, e-commerce, right? You have, so an, you have an e-commerce site that where they log in and you're wondering whether or not this will tie in with that. My first answer is probably yes. I'm about 90% sure that that is. How it happens it is above my head. <laughs> but I'm sure that there, are, I, trust me when I say there are plenty of people in the room who can probably answer that better than me. But that's exactly what this is supposed to be designed to do. All this does is pro provides that faceting. That's all this plugin does, and it's great. It really is great for just that kind of purpose. To tie into e-commerce, e I'm quite sure that that is exactly what this is probably uh, meant to support. I just don't know what the answer is. Question here. That's a great question. I believe it does. While, while I have not researched it myself um, about nested, tech, uh, nested taxonomies, I do recall making a, a reading in my research about it and that this is capable of doing it, but I'm, it's uh, beyond my knowledge at this point. Uh, sure. Um, so with the checkboxes, you can have multi-select, right? Even yes. In your case, it just displays the other options disappear, I guess, because each one right. was only associated with so, so can you have... I believe that there is a way to do that, yes. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, ideally what you want to do, and, and yes, there are some cases where you're going to do that, especially when you're going to something like Best Buy and you want to see microphones or you want to see this or you want to see all of those types of things. So yes, I'm quite sure that it does. I haven't tested it, but I'm sure that there is an actual way to do it. Any other questions? So let's see what this now looks like. So, this is what I typed in. This is the title of the post. This is what I typed in. This is our drop-down menu that we created from the type of event. The location, as you can see, there are a number of results. This is your checkboxes, and it shows me the number of results in each of those. So if I actually go back and pull down the event type, you can see all of the different options here. Now, 
one thing that you'll notice. Now, my math is not that quick. I can tell that that is not 773 posts. So what can we say by, about this from the City of Toronto's website? Not Sorry? One or the other, or both. The data is incomplete. So think about it this way. As somebody who is providing this type of information, again, this is the lesson I learned, one of the biggest lessons I learned from this, is that not everything had an associated category with it. So if you're creating this data, think of how many events are now going to be missed just by doing this. So as the creator of that event, it is your, uh, the onus is on you to really provide that. It is also the responsibility of the curator of that data to input it into that kind of thing. And you're right, maybe the event people decided not to use it. Now you see why they should have, right? Obviously, it is supported in the data set from the City of Toronto, but maybe that wasn't provided. It's really up to the City of Toronto to say this is a mandatory field, whatever it is, even if it is other, right? But just give me something. You had a question, sir. Oh no! Sorry, the the the, the result of ten was was the um, was fifteen. Yeah. So, if we are looking at all of these wonderful things here, I like film. Okay, so let's go to film. Now, notice what we've got here. We've got three hundred thirty. I haven't chosen anything yet. Three hundred thirty, one hundred ninety-one, blah blah blah. Okay, there are four events in film. Keep your eye on the location. Ooh, I like that. Satori. So now I've chosen four, chosen four. It now automatically goes to that database and filters down the results based on the event, that you, the event type that you have chosen. So there are three in the downtown core, one in Central West. So it's just gotten rid of, okay, so if, this, um, if you're looking for a film event, these are the only regions that are going to have it, which makes perfect sense. According to what I read, yes. I just tried to keep it as simple as possible. But yes, I do believe that that is exactly what it's intended for. Yes? Does that work vice versa if you narrow it down by location with respect to the event type as well? Let's find out. Let's choose northeast, only because there's eight and we're probably going to be able to see it. See? So what it's done is by simply choosing the, the location, it's now gone into the event types and pulled only the results that equal northeast. Oddly enough, not many. Right? So if I go back to my original uh, example here, we'll choose film. There are three in downtown, one in central west. Well, I'm not much in Central West, so I'm going to go downtown. So here we have an event date. And this can be a slider. This can be an entry. Um, I am not very fond of this. It is ugly. It is ugly, but it works. That's, a, that's my thing here is that it does work. Again, I'm not you know, the, the best person for this. So I've left everything at the default. So you can see that it works or that it's here. But again, not exactly the most pretty thing in the world. So let's choose the blur. Your, so these are your results now, right? So remember how I used results? And there was that template. This is what your template displays. So if you want to change how these results are shown, maybe by number, maybe by something, whatever that thing is, so you go into the template part of Facet WP. And that's where you make your changes, whether it's 15 results, whether you want to show them on a different page, all that stuff. I leave that to the much wiser and, and better coders than myself. So the last part of this is, if I choose that, 
that is my result. So what it is now showing is the post that is related to my selection, which was part of the imported data originally. So you have the title, there's the website there, and the major intersection. Um, I also did import the description of each of these events. You'll notice there's no description. Once again, extremely important that the data that you're dealing with is complete. So we have this information, the post date. Again, I just randomized these just for the fun of it. The author, the category, in this case, the type of event, which is film. Downtown, which is the area. In my case, I chose tags, but you would probably use better metadata than that or um, advanced custom fields than that. So I just used literally what was built in, what was available to me given the imported data and the plugins that I was using. But again, you would probably want to plan this out much, much better from the top down. And you'll probably do that. This is the sort of next piece after you've imported that data and ready to display it on your site. Question here and then here. Not for this demonstration, no, it isn't. But I'm quite sure that that, so you would probably have a search that actually looks into the Facet WP database. That would be my guess, a query of sorts. Again, I'm guessing. Question here. Yes. Yes, it did. That was where the all import came in. So I, again, I just created those because I needed information. I needed some kind of thing that I could use for a demonstration. So I looked at the City of Toronto website, imported the data using the, the all import that you saw, used the all import, and then used that to create all my posts. Now, you could use dummy data. You could use whatever data you want. You may not even have import data. Again, part of this process for me was learning that you could import all of this lovely information and some of the tips and tricks along the way. It's not just about the wonderful plugin of Facet WP. It's also about how you get that data to start with, too, and how you organize it. So that's what I did, is I imported that data from the City of Toronto. It then created those 773 posts, and the results are then brought up by those, those posts, and that's what that template displays. It looks at the posts and displays those number of posts without any filtering. That's where all your selections come in. You're very welcome. Question here and then over here. Uh, where are you on the Pinterest? I just found a 15% off coupon online. You'll find them all over. I think I found a 30% off when I actually found it. Yeah, there, there are tons of, I am not an affiliate, but there are tons of affiliates out there, and, and I happen to know one of them. I went onto his website and it's right at the top. I'm like, okay. <laughs>